Hi friends, my name is Joel and welcome back to Penguin Platform. It's a bit weird being on this channel today, but I've been asked to come on and show you a day in the life of an English student. So to give a bit of background to myself, hi, my name is Joel and I run the booktube channel Fictional Fates, but alongside doing that, I'm actually studying for a degree. So I study creative writing and English literature and I often need to take study days in order to catch up with the business of my degree. And so today is Friday and I thought I'd take you along one of those study days as I try to get some work done. So typically in a third year university I'm working on my dissertation which is basically this long extended essay that culminates a chosen subject area for myself. And so my dissertation is split into two parts as I'm a joint honours student. Half of it is going to be a massive essay and half of it is going to be a creative piece, but they are long and extensive and I am scared of mine, but my supervisors who have been um, watching over me have been really helpful in the process and so I'm really excited to be cracking on with it. I'm doing my dissertation on the variable identities in the long 18th century and so I'm choosing to particularly focus on people of colour and queer people, so I'm going to be doing a bit of research on that today, whilst also doing a bit of research behind the book is over there. Let me go grab it. Whilst also doing a bit of research behind The Song of Achilles by Madeline Miller, purely because it is one of the books I'm going to be doing for my poster presentation on the freedom of sexuality in The Song of Achilles in the ancient Grecian era to the more repression of sexuality and more specifically homosexuality later on. And so I'm really excited to get into all of that. And I can't wait to deliver a presentation that is well researched, but also well laid out and coherently put together. And so that is definitely something that I want to start planning and putting together today. But I thought I'd take you along all the other aspects of being an English student as well, such as taking care of yourself and practicing self-care, but also making sure to take healthy study breaks. I think one of the biggest misconceptions about uni is that we are all studying all the time, or that we don't do any studying all the time. And I think that it's trying to find the balance between having Work, getting work done and also being able to take care of yourself to an extent that you're happy with. I really love studying my degree and I really want to like emphasize that. An English degree has helped both challenge me mentally but has also expanded my mindset to a vast number of perspectives and I think the skills that I've taken away from this degree are going to be so transferable to other areas that I am really excited to see what happens and although I'm kind of aiming for a first for my degree I don't mind if I finish with a 2-1 because at the end of the day I'm really happy with the grades that I've gotten so far and I'm just really happy with the effort that I've put in. It is currently um, half 11 and I've basically just started the morning getting up. I'm about to have some breakfast because I got up at quarter to 11. It wasn't the best time to wake up to. Um, usually I try and start my days at around about nine o'clock. Doesn't matter as long as I get some studying done. So I've just been checking my phone on some notifications. I've also been checking my emails because sometimes one of my professors will email email me and like send some extra information or they'll want to change like a meeting time or they'll want to meet with me. So my lectures were all earlier on in the week and so I'm basically gonna have a pure studying date today. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to make some breakfast, then I'm going to sit down, start some initial research and yeah, I'll check back in with you once I'm a little bit of the way through.
Hello friends, so I came to give you a progress update. So far the day's been going pretty good. I just looked over the lecture footage from Tuesday, I believe, and just noted down some of the things that I missed because it was made available today and I just want to make sure I get all of the accurate information. The content that we covered wasn't particularly what I want to do in my essay. It's still really good to have that content because it helps further my knowledge of the subject area and helps further my knowledge of kind of English literature as a whole, and so it's really great. It was my 18th century women's writers module where basically we are learning about the different hidden identities within the 18th century because women were highly underappreciated, and so for our assignment we have to pick a female writer that hasn't really been talked about much and compare them to a popularized female writer in the 18th century. And so I'm choosing Phyllis Wheatley, who basically is an American slave who was freed and brought to the United Kingdom. And so she wrote quite a bit of poems in the United Kingdom talking about the freedom of slaves and, and stopping slavery within the United Kingdom. And so it's something that I really want to discuss and talk about and comparing to another a more whiter person's poems as well. So I'm just really intrigued and excited for that because it links into my dissertation as well. So I'm killing two birds with one stone. I think right now though I am going to finish my cupcake and my matcha because my housemate made coffee cupcakes yesterday and they are amazing. So I think I'm going to finish that. Then I think what I'm going to do is probably do two study sessions. So I typically use the Pomodoro technique when it comes to studying. So I do study for about 25 minutes and then I take a five minute break and I will probably do two of those before taking kind of like my lunch where I'll probably either watch Star Trek Discovery because the new episode is out today and I'm really excited for that or I'll be playing my Nintendo Switch for an hour. I'll probably try and do a bit of Animal Crossing because I've just unlocked the Able Sisters shop. Although like I don't really talk about it much on my platform I really do like kind of expanding my knowledge about the 18th century and various other subject areas. Like next semester, I'm doing a module on writing for video games. That just sounds exciting because one of my side goals is to hopefully write for a video game one day. So I think it's gonna be really cool to kind of see how that's like how all the video game writing works and like writing from a non-linear perspective as opposed to a linear perspective, which should be amazing. And also I'm working on my dissertation next semester as well, which... <laughs> Let's not talk about the dissertation. Oh, everyone who's new to me, I don't drink coffee as often. I drank coffee like a few days ago because my housemate makes me coffee like sometimes every morning and it's just really nice. But I've been drinking for the longest time matcha lattes because matcha still has caffeine. It has a lot of caffeine in it, but it's more slow release caffeine as opposed to the instant caffeine that you get from coffee. So I find that matcha keeps me more energized throughout the day as opposed to coffee where I crash later on. I wow, I feel like I'm an infomercial for matcha. The two books actually that I'm focusing on for my dissertation and stuff is Black and British, A Forgotten History by David Elusiger, and also Chris Mounsey and Caroline Gonder's Queer People, which is a collection of essays focused on queer people and their experiences in the 18th and the 19th century. So it's basically exactly what I need. Both these books are probably gonna be my key critical texts. There are also some journal articles and essays that I need to go and find myself because as Chris, my supervisor says, you need to be kind of well read on the subject. So try and look at a lot of journal articles and essays. Even if I don't use them within my dissertation, it's good to just know anyway, just so that if I do refer to anything from those essays, I can just cite them, put them in, reference them. I'm gonna get to doing my first two study sessions and I will catch up with you during my break.
Hello, um, the time is currently quarter past five, so I basically took a bit of a break after studying to watch Star Trek Discovery and also play a bit of Animal Crossing. I find that having like a nice healthy balance between kind of work and also a social life is really good to help with university and just staying sane in the grand scheme of everything that's going on in the world at the moment. But I really wanted to highlight Phyllis Wheatley's poetry because it is just so stunning and amazing and I'm really glad that I'm working with her works for my women writing module because it's just so lovely to kind of see her perspective and also how intelligent she is and the way that she writes and her poetry is just so sensational and I found some amazing like newspaper articles from the 18th century talking about her and her works in terms of kind of the reception but also telling the public what her stories are about and the way that it's helping combat slavery within the 18th century and so it's really interesting to kind of get a grounds of what people were feeling during this time period but also the attitudes towards slavery within this time period. You can definitely see there's a bit of a divide between those who support slavery and those who want to get rid of it and also the people in the middle who don't really want to see slavery but then also are not active in fighting against it so they're quite passive in their attitudes and a lot of newspapers do act in that way. And also David Aluska in Black and British Forgotten History also makes references to Phyllis Wheatley in his text so I bookmarked some of the passages that I found were going to be quite useful when I come to write my essay and would be quite useful to reference as well and so it's very nice to kind of have have all of them together and so now what I'm gonna do is just chill for a bit and at half past I'm going to do another hour's study session. I think what I'll do is do a session of just reading and then I'll do a session of writing so then I have an equal blend of productivity and then I think I'll be done with my work for the day because I don't really want to have myself do like a bunch of studying in one go purely because this is quite a nice chill week. It's the week of research and it's starting to formulate ideas rather than actually writing my essays. Right my essays will probably come to the latter part of next week. The one thing that I think with university is just making sure that you pace yourself accordingly during the semester, so knowing that if you get your work done sooner, you have more time to edit and revise your work and make it a stronger piece to submit. And I think that one of the things that is really emphasised in university is research, but also making sure that you stay on top of things. It's been quite hard personally, as like someone who has a booktube channel, university, but also ha trying to have some semblance of a social life and free up time for myself to do things that I want to do and I think it's just trying to find a healthy balance between knowing when to take a break from certain things in order to focus on other things. University is just such an amazing place because I've met so many amazing people and lifelong friends. I've also deepened my knowledge on creative writing and English literature in order to become a better scholar, academic and writer. I think that the entire thing has just been such an unforgettable experience and I would love like everyone to have the opportunity to go to university but if you university isn't for you, there are always other options out there like apprenticeships or maybe even full-time work, like you never know. It's just been really good to record this study day and just kind of show a lot of you all of the things that I kind of do on a daily basis when it turns to having study days and yeah, I'm just having a lot of fun with it. So yeah, I'm gonna get studying and I will chat with you in a bit. Okay, so I was about to do some written work, however, my lecturer just emailed saying that the lecture video for Tuesday's seminar has now been uploaded, so I might instead watch the lecture in order to get a leg up on the seminar and just make some notes from there. So instead, I'm gonna spend the next hour basically watching a lecture, so that should be fun. Let's get to watching the lecture. Hello friends, so I just got finished with my lecture and it was amazing. We basically did Eliza Haywood, who is a poet and author in the 18th century, but we also talked about the passions, which is basically the emotional capacity of people and how Alexander Pope said that women weren't really capable of emotional capacity, which is insane. And we basically discussed the difference between the Epicurean view of nature dictating kind of how we are because we can't control nature and 
with us. We have to be very stoic to the things that happen outside of us, whilst inside of us we have a lot of control. But we talked about Lucretian philosophy, which follows the fact that nature sucks and that we should be able to give our own selves power and influence what happens on the outside of us as well as what happens within us. And we can inflict change because we can change the outside. Lucretian philosophy gave women a lot of power, it also gave them a lot of power through exploring the passions and the stuff that Eliza Haywood does in her texts. But in her novel Lecelia, we talk about an ice maiden that suddenly falls in love and how a woman who doesn't really have any emotions has passion and that's why Elsa came in with Let It Go because she was an ice maiden who finally realised her passion itself and realised like her powers was her passion but also her love for her sister was her passion as well and so it showed really showed that women do have emotions and they do have intelligence much to the dismay of 18th century men. The lecture also showed like how much control we have over ourselves but also how much control we have on the outer world. We can see this nowadays with how we inflict change upon the world as we see it. The nature of things can be changed, like things don't always have to be the same way forever. We can make change as we see fit and build a better place as opposed to having a stoic world that we just live with. So yeah, that was basically everything I learned from the lecture and I am all studied out for the day. I have done quite a lot of work today in terms of making notes via Notion, which is like my main note taking tool. I have a whole like hub set up and all my class notes in there. So yeah, that's basically things I do on a typical study day. Not all study days are like this. Sometimes I usually only have to do like less, like maybe only watch a pre-recorded lecture. Sometimes I might spend the entire day studying because there is like an essay that's due or there's just something that crops up as and when. This is quite a quiet study day today purely because I don't really want to focus too much on my essays yet because I still want to have a little bit of time to have a bit more free time and so I had quite a nice balance between the free time and also the busyness. I have had so much fun going through my study day with all of you and definitely let me know in the comment section if you want to see more of this or more of me discussing my degree over on the Penguin Platform YouTube channel. I definitely think that there is a lot of room for amazing videos in terms of university theory and university things. If there's any other videos you want me to make on this channel, let me know because, you know, I could be back for another video sometime soon. Um, but yeah, if you like this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up and if you're new here, be sure to click that subscribe button so that you can see all of the wonderful videos that Penguin Platform puts out on their channel. Yeah, if you want to catch me on any other social media platforms, I'm sure my social media links will be left in the description down below. And come check me out over on my YouTube channel, Fictional Fates, where I mostly talk about fantasy books, but I also do genre exploration vlogs once in a while where I explore a genre that I haven't really read as much of. So in my recent reading vlog, I read a bunch of horror books and I had so much fun exploring the horror genre and I definitely think it's going to be a genre that I'm going to be reading more of in the future. So yeah, I have just had so much fun and academia is definitely something that I am really, really passionate about. So if you're currently at university studying your GCSEs on A-levels, just tell me what subjects would you like to go into into the future and you can leave that in the comment section down below as well. And I definitely think that we can really get a nice discussion going about all the different things we're passionate about subject-wise. So yeah, I guess until the next time. Bye friends.